In this video, I'm going to be talking about something a little different from what I normally discuss on my channel, and that is a problem for which I'm not going to be offering a solution. But I think that this is a problem that a lot of people have and don't even know that they have, and the first step in solving any problem is even realizing that you have it. So let's talk about it. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, we are talking about single preppers. Are you a single prepper? I am a single prepper. I live here at the homestead with River, and Amber is a housemate of ours, but um, you know, it's just me, and I've been looking for the past several years to see if I could change that situation. Like I mentioned in the intro, I don't have a solution. I haven't been able to change it myself, and I'm gonna talk you know, some, about some of the challenges, uh, and I'd like to hear some of the challenges that you guys have been facing, but specifically, I wanted to address this because there is a fantasy that is going around in kind of the prepping world that, you know, I guess, Maybe mostly with men. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, men kind of dominate in this in in this particular uh, kind of field anyway. At least that's most of the voices here on YouTube. Um, you know, so I'm not sure if this is like you know a delusion that uh, women are deluding themselves with as well. But there's this fantasy w with preppers that you know a lot of us feel like. Um, uh, you know, it, society may hate us now, and so society doesn't understand us, and we are kind of like you know scoffed at at the moment. But when the shit hits the fan, you know, people are going to be flocking to us, and you know, we're going to women on both arms, and you know, it's kind of a fantasy uh, sort of uh, vision that a lot of people have. And you know, I don't know whether that's accurate or whether that's inaccurate. I think to some degree that things like that will uh, tend to happen because uh, preps would start being seen as wealth, and you know people flock to wealth, so I guess there's that element to it. So I'm not going to talk about whether that's true, whether that's not true, but let's assume that it's true, and let's talk about whether that's a good plan. No, it's not. That's a horrible, horrible plan if you're looking to try to find a life partner. And the reason for that is because these types of relationships would be forged in a period of trauma. And relationships that are started when one of the parties, or both of the parties, uh, are experiencing some sort of life trauma are notoriously unstable relationships. As soon as that trauma goes away, the basis for the relationship goes away, and the relationship itself goes away. So I wanted to kind of address that, uh, talk about some of the thinking that I've been doing, and I'd really love to hear some of your thoughts as well, because like I said in the opening, this is a problem for which I don't presently have a solution. If I did, I wouldn't be, you know, dealing with it right now. So for the past several years, uh, you know, I've been trying to, uh, you know, see if I could, you know, connect with someone that's sort of of like mind, of like temperament, that can tolerate, uh, tolerate my really bizarre sense of humor. Uh, you know, someone that's interested in a lot of the things that I'm interested in. And that's challenging. You know, if you're a prepper, that's a challenging thing because most of the world thinks that we're ridiculous. Even, no matter how many uh, situations come up when it makes, when it clearly makes sense to have been a prepper, People just, <laughs> it doesn't stick. I'm not sure what the deal is. Um, but, you know, it, it's really hard to find people that are interested in living a uh, peaceful, simple, idyllic life out in the country. I, you'd think that that'd be people there'd be people flocking to that, but, you know, I guess the, the flashing lights of the city are just too mesmerizing and people are really more into that type of thing, and, uh, you know, that's the way that it is. There are a lot of people out there, there are a lot of dead eyes, dead faces. Uh, I have no problem uh, having friendships with people that are, you know, have lost their enthusiasm for being alive and are, you know, just kind of, uh, drained of energy, and, you know, uh, completely uninteresting. I mean, I have lots of, uh, you know, friendships with people like that, but, you know, if you're looking for someone that's going to live every day of your life with you, you want somebody that, uh, you know, has still has that kind of spark and enthusiasm. You know, the great thing about preppers is while we're living through these types of events, these kind of charge us up. Uh, you know, we live for challenges, and instead of these things throwing us into a depressed stupor, uh, these kind of, uh, or, or cause us to, like, you know, put the, uh, the wool over our eyes and, like, just pretend that the, the reality of the world is not the reality of the world, uh, you know, these kind of uh, uh, events really kind of uh, energize us and give us an enthusiasm to go, 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 you can do it. Uh, and, you know, there's honestly not a lot of people out, that, out there. Um, or at least I've had a lot of trouble finding any of them. Um, so I wanted to kind of bring that up, that if that is your plan to, you know, wait until the shit hits the fan and then, you know, clearly people are going to be flocking to your door and there's going to be that kind of... Uh, uh, you know, person who needs help and you can offer help kind of relationship and you can base a relationship off of that, 
you know, that is going to work for a certain amount of time. And then when that neediness, uh, you know, goes away, because I see the, the period that we're moving into, it's going to be difficult, but it'll, it'll have a beginning, it'll have a middle, it'll have an end. Uh, you know, once we get to that end, uh, you know, the that relationship is going to fall apart on you. And it's not necessarily because the person is manipulating you or using you or, or whatever, at least not consciously. I think it's just a natural part of, uh, uh, you know, humans that, well, it, it works both ways. Uh, when you are helping someone, I find that you naturally kind of develop uh, feelings for that person. Uh, you know, maybe not romantic feelings, but feelings of care and compassion, you know, and you care about what, this ha what happens to this person. Um, I found a big example of that in my own life uh, when my boy was born. Everyone says, like, when you have a child, as soon as the child pops out, you instantly feel this kind of, like, magical electric bond with, with the child. And um, no, not, not, not at all for me and not for a lot of other parents that I've talked about. A lot of parents, I think, don't like to admit it. Like, maybe they think that there's, like, what's wrong with me? Why didn't I feel this magical electric bond? But, you know, when I've mentioned that I didn't get that to other parents, a lot of parents are like, yeah, you know, that was the way it was for me, too. And obviously, I, I love my boy today and feel that magical electric bond with him today but it wasn't just biological that you know it's like I you know I share genes with you so I have this you know magic rainbow bridge electric uh, connection between me and you it's the act of caring for and taking care of another that really forges that kind of feeling of love and compassion and um, you know, it's the same kind of thing. It's like if you adopt, uh, you know, a stray animal or something like that. It's like you know, you see stray animals on on the um, uh, you know out, out in the roads, you know, now and then, uh, and you know, maybe your heart goes out to them. But uh, certainly, if you take that animal in and care for it for you know a number of months or or years, certainly, you know that that uh, you, you know you develop a real relationship with that animal. So it works in that direction. When you're caring for another person, you start develop, de developing feelings for that person. If someone is caring for you, that uh, the person who's being cared for starts developing feelings for the person is do who is doing the caring. It's not that either one of you is, uh, you know, intentionally, uh, you know, uh, manipulating the other or whatever. It's just our brain chemistry manipulating us both at the same time uh, into, you know, feeling those feelings. And I've been in several relationships in the past where they were kind of started with that. I like helping people. That's just kind of my personality. And... Um, you know, I have developed relations, relationships with some people where it was uh, a situation where it just felt like they needed a leg up and, you know, if I could just, you know, get them on their feet and get them going again and, you know, and by kind of working through that kind of, uh, you know, helping relationship, you know, they, uh, they developed feelings for me, I developed feelings for them. But then once that need was gone, the relationship was gone as well. And that is going to happen to a lot of people if you are creating relationships during this future period of trauma that we are all headed for. I've seen this period of trauma coming for a while, and I've been doing everything that I think that I can do to try to, you know, connect with someone ahead of that because, uh, you know, relationships that start up during that period, it's going to be really difficult to tell whether they're going to last. You know, there are going to be a lot of people over the next several years that are going to be drawn to this idyllic, peaceful life out in the country. But, you know, as soon as the dangers of not living that life start to go away and as soon as it becomes possible to kind of go back to their old patterns, I think a lot of people are going to do that. And again, it's not because they're trying to manipulate people. It's just because that's the way our brain chemistry works and, you know, it's just reality. So I wanted to bring that point up. I think it's something not a lot of us think about. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think oftentimes preppers, uh, just in general, are not known for having the best people skills. I don't really know whether that's true. I, I remember um, a Canadian prepper was joking about that in one of his videos. And it may be true, it may not be true. It might just be that all the preppers who do have really good people skills know well enough not to bring up the fact that they're a prepper because they know, you know, uh, through their people skills, you know, uh, what are the ramifications of talking about the idea that you're a prepper. So maybe all the preppers who do have good people skills, we just don't know are preppers. But if you are a prepper and you don't have great people skills, it is possible to connect with people. I personally have no trouble connecting with people. It's just the people that I connect with I have no interest in because, like, you know, they're your average people and, you know, great for friends, but I certainly wouldn't want to live every day of my life with them. But if you have trouble connecting with people at all, uh, one technique that I... Uh, uh, could offer to you. I've talked about it at length in another video. Here's a link to that video. I'm not sure which corner pops up on one of these corners. Um, if you want to check that out, it offers you some tips on how to connect with people if you are someone that has trouble connecting with other people. It's not really actually all that difficult and there come uh, with it a lot of benefits that are in addition to the ability to more easily make friends. Uh, it just makes your life more interesting, more rich, and I'll leave the me in that video 
to do the talking on that. I'll put a link in the cards here and down in the description below if you want to check that out. But if you have trouble making connections with other people and maybe starting down the road towards a relationship, it's not that difficult. And uh, the technique that you can use to do that is something you can pick up and practice slowly over time. And I guarantee once you start playing with it, you'll find that it makes your time out with other people a lot more fun as well. So that's it. I'd love to hear any tips that you have down in the comments below. Are you a single prepper? Has this been something that's been on your mind? Was it uh, your sense that you were just going to kind of wait until people needed you? Did I like just dump a bunch of cold water on that plan? Do you think that it was uh, unreasonable for me to, to think that it's a bad idea to wait to that point? Or are you thinking, holy crap, practice is right. I probably should come up with another approach to this. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.